In today's video, we're gonna look at three helpful questions to make buying a circular saw easier, and then we're gonna look at three must-have accessories for that new saw. Question number one, do you need a blade right or a blade left saw? Now this question doesn't really come up often on YouTube, but it makes a huge difference or it can make a huge difference for the user. So let's start off by looking at a blade right saw like this one here. But before we do that, I do want to mention that I am right-handed, so all the information that, that I'm going to be presenting today is from a right-handed perspective. However, if you're left-handed, all you have to do is flip what I'm saying to make it right for you. For starters, when it comes to right-handed users with a right blade saw, it can be kind of hard or awkward to see your cut line because the blade is away from you. So you either have to look through this small opening here or you have to look over your right shoulder which can be awkward. But the nice thing about a right blade saw with a right-handed user is that the sawdust is actually going away from you. Unlike if you had a left blade saw like this one where the sawdust would be coming right at me. Blade right saws like this one here for the right-handed user are generally more comfortable to use two-handed because your hands are right next to each other. It's also a little bit better when you operate the blade guard as your my left hand reaches over to raise the blade guard. It is safely over the motor and not anywhere close to the blade. Unlike if I was to use a blade left, once I reach in to start to operate the blade guard, my hand would almost feel like it's going into the blade, which can be quite uncomfortable for some people. Another thing to consider here is where is the weight of the saw? Is it on the waist side or is it on the keeper side? For example, with a blade right saw, cutting a 2x4 to length would mean that the saw is now over the keeper piece or the piece that you're keeping, which makes the cut more stable because the weight of the saw is being supported even after the cut. However, if you're cutting a small strip off a wide piece of plywood and you can't reach over it, you'll have to change directions, which means that the main weight of the saw is now over the waist piece, making for a less stable cut because you're cutting off the piece that is supporting the saw. So just know in general, if you have a hard time holding up the weight of the saw and or you're just interested in making the most stable cut, always keep the main weight of the saw on the piece you're keeping. Moving on, when it comes to right-handed users with a blade left saw, your cut line is completely unobstructed. You have no problems seeing your cut line and you don't have to look over your right shoulder. However, when it comes to two-handed operations, it can be somewhat uncomfortable because your left hand is almost crossing over your right. And of course, the sawdust is gonna be coming right at you. And like I did mention briefly already, when you go to operate the blade guard, your left hand can be somewhat uncomfortable being that close to the blade. However, if you were cutting that same small strip of plywood, the weight of the saw is now supported better because it's not on the waist side of the cut. This topic of blade right versus blade left is highly debatable, but ultimately it comes down to what saw you feel most comfortable with, whether you're right-handed or left-handed. Question number two, do you need a battery operated or a corded saw? Well, in order to help you answer that question, you need to first think about how much you're gonna be using the saw and for what purpose. For example, are you more of a DIY hobbyist who might only be using the saw for the weekends and on small projects? Or are you someone who is gonna be using the saw on a daily basis? Are you looking for the saw to work really hard for you, like with a lot of demolition and house framing? Or is the saw gonna be used for lightweight projects mostly and maybe a little bit of heavy use now and again. In general, if you're using the saw on a daily basis and for heavy use, a corded version might be the best option for you. And then if you're looking for anything less than that, maybe a battery operated one might be best for you. Again, this isn't a hard rule, but as you can see, it helps to think through these to figure out which saw is gonna be best for you. Another thing to think through is a pros and cons list for each saw. The corded saw, for example, is always ready to use. They have lots of constant power, meaning it never slows or gets tired after a long day of use. 
They are more powerful and can be cheaper to maintain over their lifetime compared to a battery operated version. The cons are of course that you need constant power, plus the corded saws themselves can be heavier which can be a deal breaker for some of you. Battery operated saws on the other hand are great because they are not restricted by the cord. It's safer because you don't have to worry about the cord getting caught on something or accidentally cutting it by mistake. They're great for locations that may not have power or where getting power to the saw might be just too much work. Cordless saws are generally lighter which makes them much easier to handle. The biggest con for battery operated saws is the batteries themselves. You have to keep them charged which means at some point you either have to have multiple batteries to get you through the day or be around a power source. In addition to that batteries do need to be replaced which nowadays is expensive so the maintenance on these saws is more than their corded versions. As you can see it's helpful to think through some of these pros and cons before you make a decision but regardless of what you do either way you go I don't think you'll be disappointed. Question number three what style or size saw do you need? There are two main styles of saws a worm drive saw and a direct drive or sometimes called a sidewinder. The worm drive saw hit the market somewhere around the mid 1920s and was made by skill saw. As you can see the motor and the handle are all central making the saw more balanced from left to right. It's smaller in width but overall longer so that you're able to reach out further making cuts more easily when you're trying to cross cut or rip full sheets of plywood for example. Worm drive saws have a special spiral gear or worm gear that transfers the motor's power 90 degrees making it possible to have the motor shaft pointing in one direction and the blade pointing in another. The other thing that worm gear does is it actually increases the overall torque of the saw making it feel much more powerful. So for example this is a 15 amp motor and this is a 13 amp motor but this saw because of the gearing feels much more powerful than this saw here. Very soon after the worm drive saw was invented another company came along and started working on another saw and they called this the sidewinder. The sidewinder doesn't utilize a worm drive like this saw does but a direct drive meaning that the, there's a shaft that comes right out of the motor and attaches to the blade itself. These saws generally run at a higher RPM and lower torque where these are at lower RPM but higher torque. These come generally blade right where these come blade left. And the other thing to note is that because the motor is offset this saw generally feels off balance. And like we already talked about this really comes into play when you have the weight of the motor on the wayside as it wants to fall or drop as you make the cut. For the majority of people a worm drive saw is just too much of a saw but for those in the trades who work on a daily basis this saw could be a good option. So now that you know the two different styles of saws let's talk quickly about the size of the saws. Circular saws are sized by the diameter of the blade. And the blade sizes can range anywhere from four and a half inches or 114 millimeters to over 16 inches or 406 millimeters. I wouldn't recommend going smaller than a six and a half or 165 millimeters because the saw's cut can cut to a depth of around two and a quarter or 57 millimeters at 90 degrees and about an inch and three quarters or 44.5 millimeters at 45 degrees. And I recommend not going smaller than this because if you do you'll be unable to make a 45 degree bevel through any framing material like a 2 by 4 for example. So the most common size and the one that works for the majority of people is the 7 and a quarter or 185 millimeter saw which cuts at a depth of 2 and a half inches 63.5 millimeters at 90 degrees and an inch and three quarters at 45 degrees. Choosing the right size saw is relatively easy because once you know the thickness of the material that you need to cut through, that dimension will dictate the size of the saw that you need to buy. Now that you know all the details behind the three questions, at this point you should be able to think through what you need, what you want, maybe what you desire to have in a saw and choose what's perfect for you. Now before we end for the day I do want to quickly talk about three accessories for your new saw. The first accessory and the one that may seem 
too obvious is to get a good quality blade. One would assume, and myself included, that each new saw would come with a great blade. Some do, and some don't. If you're looking for a clean cut, you will have to upgrade to a higher quality blade like a Diablo, for example. This is a finished blade, meaning it has more teeth than a standard framing blade, which means it is going to cut much cleaner. There are a lot of good quality blades out there, so I don't want you to think Diablo is the only one out there for you. The next accessory which I recommend getting is a good straight edge clamp. A straight edge clamp allows you to cross cut and rip large pieces of material with your saw. What I have here is a 50 inch clamp from Trend Tools and I like this one because it has T-Tracks built into it, which means that I can attach other accessories to it. All you have to do is clamp it down and ride your saw along the edge to get a perfect straight cut. There are plenty to choose from, but this straight edge is by far my number one most used accessory in the shop. And what's also nice about this is that it can also be used with a router and a jigsaw. The next accessory which I recommend getting is a good rip fence like this one. Because the straight edge clamp is limited to 50 inches, there may be times when you're going to need to rip longer cuts. Therefore, something like this Craig rip cut jig works great. It allows you to mount the saw on a sled and then you can make long rip cuts with it. If you don't have a table saw, this is a must have accessory. This jig isn't perfect by all means, but for the money, I think it does a pretty good job. And since we're talking about rip cuts, let me give you just one more accessory, and that is a squid jig. This is a great little tool that clamps onto the front of your saw and allows you to make narrow, long rip cuts on plywood and framing lumber. And like the straight edge clamp, this is a multi-purpose tool as well. This is fantastic for laying out stairs. So all of these accessories are great. Which one is best for you is totally up to you. I know that some of you may be wondering why I didn't tell you about the best specific brand to buy, and I'm just not going to do that. In general, all of the name brand saws are great and you really can't go wrong with any of them. I also do know that there's a lot of non-name brand saws out there. For those, just look at the reviews and if you can ask or talk to someone who owns one, that would be ideal as well. And of course, if you're out shopping online and you need my input, just send me a message and I'll do what I can do. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you all are doing extremely well. God bless. See you in the next video.